This video covers the assembly and installation of the roof rack for the two-door Ford Bronco. If you're working on a four-door Ford Bronco, this is not the video for you. Stop, go back, look at the four-door version. This completes the installation for the two-door model. Couple of facts. You have to have a hard top. This will not work on the soft top version of this vehicle. Has to be the, the hard top. Our roof rack doesn't require any drilling. Uh, it uses factory mounting locations and the uh, front top section is still completely removable uh, once the roof rack is installed. So let's start by going over some of the parts of the roof rack to familiarize ourselves with the terminology that we're going to use as we do the assembly. I'll reset the camera, show you guys the different pieces and parts to this roof rack and we'll go from there. There are some color options available uh, for the Bronco roof rack. This particular unit is all stealth black but there are color options available for these pieces right here. So your, your components may look a little bit different than this. It's also important to note that this vehicle has the, the notched windscreen for a 40 inch light bar. So it's got these two brackets with it as well. If you ordered yours as a no cut, you won't have um, those additional brackets and your windscreen will be cut flat across the top. So the groove tech for your roof rack are the quarter inch thick, really long one piece panels. There's no bends on them or anything like that. They're not driver and passenger side specific. You can literally use them on either side of the vehicle. The VRS, which is the very rigid subframe, that consists of the 3 16 inch pieces that are bent and they are driver and passenger side. We'll go over that a little bit later. Then you've got your armor, the outside pieces, these are the ones that are available for color match. So again, on this vehicle, they're black, but yours may be color matched to the vehicle or some other crazy color that you want uh, to match the exterior of the truck. Your rear mating feet and your front mating feet. These lower support brackets, I'll show you where those go later. And then grab handles. Now we've already tied these to speed this uh, process up on the installation video, but the grab handles will ship to you untied. You will have to do that part yourself. Your roof rack shipped to you with two different styles of load bars. Both of them are the exact same width, but one of them is two inches wide, one inch tall. This takes up the majority of the slots that are available for load bars and gear mounting on this roof rack. And then there are three two by two load bars. These are in here uh, because these will bear more weight and on the rigid frame of this type of a roof rack, we're going to use these two by twos for more strength to make this rack as strong as we can without drilling any holes. The first thing we want to do is remove the two small plastic accessory caps at the front of the vehicle. They're mounted up here by the windshield. To do that, you need a small flathead screwdriver and a 10 millimeter socket and ratchet. Hardtop Broncos have an accessory mount at the front of the vehicle. If you follow that around and look, and on the factory windshield it says accessory ready right here. This is the cap that you're going to remove. If your Bronco's had its windshield replaced, it may not still say accessory ready. In that case, just follow the A-pillar up. There's a dedicated little plastic cap right here that has a black push button in the back of it. Take your little flathead screwdriver, push in on that button, and remove that plastic cap. Now. I'm going to show you guys how to reuse this assembly to hide the mounting foot at the front of the roof rack. It's totally an optional step. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to. I'm even going to talk about two different ways that you can do that. But for now, I need to get this out of the way for my front foot. So I'm going to use my 10 millimeter socket and my ratchet, loosen up those factory nuts, retain these nuts. You're going to reuse them. Do not lose them. If you do lose them and you need to source new ones, they are M6 by one, pretty important. Okay. So, and then just lift up and remove this little plastic cap. I've worked on this thing for about four days straight, so I know driver and passenger. I'm not gonna label these. If you're gonna have them off and you think this is gonna take you a while, you might wanna take a Sharpie and under the cap and on the plastic, just write driver and passenger for now. Go take the one off on the passenger side so that you have these exposed studs. This is where the roof rack is actually going to mount to in the front. 
Next, grab your front feet. These are part number 1381. They are used at the same spot at the front of the vehicle. There is no left, right. You just have two of the 1381 parts and they'll both be your front feet, one on the driver's side, one on the passenger side, but they'll fit in either location. You've got your mounting slots here, and then later you have your holes for attaching to the front load bar, which will secure the rack assembly to the front of the vehicle. These are gonna drop right in the factory location. We're gonna reuse that 10 millimeter ratchet. So let's go install the front feet. So now I'm back up on the roof of the vehicle. I'm gonna align the slots in my feet to the studs on the driver and then the passenger side. And these slots are machined in here like this because it's the same foot for both sides of the vehicle. It'll index itself so that it fits right down in that channel like that. So on the driver's side, it'll be to the inside here. The outside will be open. And then on the passenger side, again, they'll be on the inside. And the outside face in that side of the vehicle will also be open. So for now, I just want to start these nuts. It's still pretty loose, right? I can still maneuver it around. That's how you want them for now. Now go put on the passenger side. Over on the passenger side of the vehicle, it's the, the same thing. Just drop it over the slots like that, over the studs, and start the, the nuts on both of the exposed studs. And you want to leave them loose so that they'll still move a little bit like that. We're going to tighten them up here in a bit. This takes care of the front feet. Now let's go put on the back feet. The 1382 back feet are designed to go on the vehicle like this. They'll face each other, so left side, right side. They're not indexed, so you can use either one on either side of the vehicle. They're going to attach to a pair of the 2x2, two two. so that's the load bar that you have that has four holes in each end that are threaded. They're going to attach to those first, and then that'll give you a platform to anchor the roof rack side so that you can load the remaining load bars into the assembly. Before we're ready to put these in the vehicle, there's a little bit of prep work. In your kit, there should be some foam strips. We need to apply them to the uh, bottom side of these feet first. So I'm going to reposition the camera and show you guys how to put these on. So if you set the feet on the table like this to where the bend is pointed towards the sky, I can fit my hand under here and I have this flange. This foam tape is going to apply to the inside edge of that. So if you're looking at it from the side, it needs to be installed here. It's there to prevent wear and tear on your fiberglass top on your Bronco. So I'm just going to push it all the way in against the edge there, line it up left to right, like that. And then I just want to push down on it to seat it. So it should look like that. And do the same thing with the other foot. So it's all the way into that inside edge right there, so it's flush out here on the outside. And then just press down on it. It's self-healing foam, so it'll spring right back. So both of them should look like that. The foam, again, is on the inside edge, not on the, the bottom flat edge, and it's on the opposite end of the holes. So now I'm ready to slide these into the vehicle, and I'll show you where those go. But part of putting these on is that we've got to bolt the load bars into this assembly to pinch it onto the roof of the vehicle so that it gives us structure to mount our roof rack to. Grab the bag of hardware that says load bars. It's got the one inch black bolts in it and a 5 30 seconds Allen wrench. To start with, we're going to need eight bolts, four per side. So if you look at the back of your vehicle, there's a notch in the roof right here. So here's the gas door come up, it's flat line, and there's a notch. These feet so there's your foam right there. These feet are designed to pitch in to that slot. And right now it just kind of wiggle back and forth, but it locks down underneath that lip. You can see position wise right now, it doesn't matter. The roof rack will actually pull everything to right where it's supposed to be. And there's not much play in that to begin with. So I've slid in the one on the driver's side. I'm gonna go put the one on the passenger side now too, the exact same way. But if you look down the vehicle, it comes straight up, then bends in, and then the, the rail where you can actually mount your load bars up here at the top is closest to the inside of the vehicle. Over on the passenger side, it's the same thing. I just follow it. You can see that notch right there. Take my foot, work it down into the, to the notch, and just push it all the way in like that and leave it. So now you can look across and you see both of them on the roof of the truck. So I started off by setting the, both of the two by two load bars on the roof of the vehicle so it's easier for me to get to. 
if you look at your foot, and again, guys, I'm on the driver's side of the vehicle. We'll do the passenger side after, but right now, for reference, I am on the, there's the steering wheel. I'm on the driver's side. So there's two sets of holes at the bottom and two sets of holes at the top. Preliminary, when we attach the load bar, we're going to align the bottom holes in the load bar to the bottom holes here. And right now, there won't be any hardware in these top holes. One load bar is going to install to these two holes. This other load bar is going to install to those two holes. I don't want to tighten anything up fully just yet. I want to get all eight bolts started, all four per side. So let me set the camera up, and I'll finagle this around by myself and show you guys how. So first load bar, these top holes are empty. I'm in the bottom holes of the load bar and the bottom holes of the mount foot. The other load bar goes here. I missed. So I've got the four bottom bolts started now. I'm going to take the remaining four and go do the same thing on the other side. When I get over to the passenger side, you can see, so those load bars are pulled up in the air. Right now, these are still sitting on the roof. I need to pick them up and align those holes, just like we did on the other side. So take my Allen key, lift the load bar up, and just kind of look over the top of it and get a few threads started on each bolt so it holds this in place for me. So again, no bolts in the upper hole. You can see the threaded inserts or the threaded holes in the load bar right there. I'm in the bottom and right now I have this gap. So I wanna work my way from left to right and tighten up all these bolts. As I do, I wanna make sure that when the load bar comes in and this starts to crush up and gets tight, that this stays parallel. This is the exact same shape and size as the top edge and side edge of each load bar. So you want to make sure that these load bars go in square. Now I'm going to tighten up the four bolts on this side. Then I'll go tighten up the four bolts on the driver's side. And again, start back here in just one, two, three, four. So I have the passenger side tightened. I'm pulled all the way up flush across here. I'm square across both sides. Now we're gonna go tighten up the driver's side. When you're tightening up the driver's side, it's not gonna go nearly as easy as this side did. Right now there's no tension between the two feet and the two load bars that span the roof of the truck. Once we've got this one locked down, we go to tighten up the driver's side. It's gonna take considerable more torque on the ratchet to get that to happen. 
uh, because at this point you're actually starting to pull the feet inwards so that they lock into the groove in the roof of the vehicle so that the rear of the roof rack is secured enough to hold big rooftop tips and stuff like that. Over on the driver's side, same thing. I'm going to try and get these snug and then I'll move the camera so I can show you guys what I'm talking about with the tension. So hopefully this comes through okay in the camera. Maybe. There we go. I'm tightening at the bottom, but the top is already coming closer to the load bar. That means there's a lot of tension that's going to be put on this to clamp this assembly together. I'm going to start each one of these. And same as the other side. You want to make sure that this stays parallel to the sides and the top. I've got all four of them started, and you'll see that there is a noticeable gap at the bottom because this is not pulled flush to this load bar. So now I really want to turn these to get to, to suck that gap up so that these load bars pull the feet in. There's that one. So that the load bars pull the feet in and apply the right amount of tension across the span of the roof. Okay, so now I can't move it, right? Like it's locked on, we're tight. We have two two by two load bars in here to serve as the rear support structure. The four remaining holes on each side will be the anchor points for the groove tack part of the assembly. So now let's go put the hardware on the front feet and the front load bar in. In order to have something to secure the front load bar to, we're gonna have to pre-assemble some hardware I want you to find the bag of hardware that says foot to load bar. In it, you're going to find threaded inserts like this right here. And then you'll find your bolts, lock washers, and flat washers that we'll use to secure that load bar to that foot. Before we can do that, we need to apply the included VC3 thread locker to the threads of these bolts. This thing ships to you and it's got this little stop collar on it. Take it apart, pull the stop collar out. Don't squeeze the tube, but screw that back on. And the top will puncture the seal on the thread locker so that you can put it on the threads of the fasteners. So each fastener needs to be done. And you just take that dispenser and just coat the end of that fastener, like this right here. And then make sure that it goes 360 degrees and about the last quarter inch of that fastener and then let that material air dry for 10 minutes or so until it's no longer like sticky when you touch it it should be fully cured before you put it on so go ahead and attach the or apply rather the thread locker to the bolts in the bag of hardware that says foot to load bar let that cure and then come back we'll be ready to put it on the uh, the truck so back up at the front of the vehicle and you're going to do this exact same thing on the driver and passenger side but I've got my three bolts, lock washers and flat washers, and my threaded insert. And if you look at that threaded insert, it has a chisel to one edge on it. That chisel needs to face away from the foot, like this direction here. So the flat side faces the back of this piece with the holes in it, and the chiseled side faces the hood of the truck. Just line up uh, a bolt, lock washer, and flat washer, and start by hand uh, a bolt into each threaded section of that insert and you want to leave them loose. So see I can still move them back and forth and they're started like this. I'm going to slide that load bar across here in a little bit but before that we need to go put the, the same setup on the passenger side. Over on the passenger side it's going to be the exact same thing. Just install the threaded insert so that it faces the the windshield or the hood of the vehicle and the bolt should be back here facing you which here backwards is the rear of the vehicle so get all those started and again you want to leave them loose because we want to line up our load bar and slide it across from one side of the truck to the other but once you've got that done on both sides we're ready to install the front load bar
For the front load bar, we're gonna use a standard two by one load bar. So where in the back you use the two by two with the four holes. This one's just gonna be a two by one with the two holes. And then we're gonna slide it across. So let me set the camera up and I'll show you how we do that. I'm standing on the driver's side. You guys can see the feet with the hardware in it that we've already started. I do have my two by one load bar up here. I'm going to align this two by one load bar so that it hits the single slot with the, the rest of the load bar face in the front of the vehicle. I'm gonna align it to that hardware, that, that threaded insert, and then I just wanna slide it across like that. And then, let me see if I can position the camera to show you guys. So I've got it, and I just, I line it up over there on the other side so that it sticks. Now right now they're sitting at an angle, so that's about as far as it's gonna let me push it but I can now go to the other side of the vehicle and finish sliding that load bar across. But it should be sitting on the vehicle like this. So see how it's at an angle? You have the two threaded holes on the end. It's in the top. So if I'm at the front of the vehicle, it's fitting like that right now. See that? Okay. So now I'm gonna go to the passenger side and finish feeding the load bar across. When I get to the passenger side, I can just manipulate this foot. That's why I told you guys to leave that loose. So I can set that and slide the load bar so that it's fully attached and anchored. I got about three inches hanging off on either side right now. We'll use this as an adjustment later to shore everything up and make sure that the rack is centered at the front. But for now, I have what I need to anchor the sides of the roof rack. Before we get into putting the sides of the roof rack together, we're gonna to go ahead and preload the windscreen and install that to the front of the roof rack because it's easier to slide it in place than it would be to line up all the nuts and bolts to bolt it in later. So I'm gonna show you guys how to put the windscreen in before you put the sides on it. Because of the way we designed the Bronco roof rack and, the, and using the factory mounting locations, this roof rack doesn't feature the same light mounting options as some of the other racks that you may see on our website or through our social media. The Bronco literally has, <coughs> excuse me, it's not COVID, I promise. Um, the, the Bronco really has two windscreen options. It has the, the cut version, which is notched like this for a 40 inch light bar, uh, and the no cut version, which just has the ridges across the top. In this 40 inch cut, um, you can install just about any array of lighting that you might want up to 40 inches wide without obstructing the lighting. The 40 inch cut version does come with some brackets to mount, you know, like a standard work light style long rectangular light bars to. And at the end of this video, I'll show you guys how we use those brackets with this rack. But for now, I wanna focus on getting the windscreen loaded and attached to that front load bar that you just put on because it's easier to slide it in place than it is to bolt it in place. Find the bag of hardware that says windscreen on it. And inside of that bag, you're gonna find, and it's no big secret that we've put this together like three times at this point before you guys see the video. Um, you're gonna have these threaded inserts like this. And if you look at them closely, there's a protrusion on one side and then the other side is flat. When you put the bolt in through the windscreen in a bit, you're gonna do it so that that protrusion faces down. So it should be like that, where the protrusion is actually opposite of the head of the fastener. But before we get to that, I wanna take that VC3 and apply it to the threads of all eight bolts for the windscreen. It takes a, a lot of vibration and a lot of beating off-road so it's important that you put the thread locker on these bolts. Just like you did with the other bolts earlier, go ahead and install that thread locker and let it dry for about 10 minutes and then you'll be ready to install the windscreen. So my thread locker is cured. I'm gonna take a bolt and one of the threaded inserts. And if you look at your windscreen, you've got these holes about every 16 inches or so going across. There's two, one on top of the other. Put the bolt through the windscreen and then with the protrusion, this little guy, the rib, see how the other side's flat? With the protrusion facing down, just put like one or two turns on that to mate that threaded insert to that, uh, to that bolt. Make sure you do that in all eight locations. And that's gonna set us up to just slide this windscreen in place instead of the alternative, which would be sliding these inserts into the load bar and then moving them back and forth until you got them finally lined up and I promise that you do not want to do it that way. 
So this is much faster and is way better at capturing and keeping your sanity. I'll show you guys the back side of this as soon as I'm done. So. So in the front, I've got the, the bolt head going across the windscreen, and in the back, you've got these threaded inserts. As far as getting them all to face the same direction, typically if you just take the windscreen and stand it up and give it a jiggle, you can direct these guys so that they sit kind of parallel. See where that face in the same direction as the, the windscreen itself? That's how we want it when we go to line it up to the windscreen, or to the, uh, to the load bar that the windscreen mounts in. So, it's going to be tricky for me to set this camera up to show this by myself, but I'm going to be aiming for these top two slots that face away from the vehicle. So I want to put those threaded inserts into the front two channels on this load bar. Nothing goes here, nothing goes on the back side, and our mounting foot is on the front side. So rotate the nuts around until they're parallel to the lower skin there just line them up on the track and slide the windscreen across from one side of the truck to the other. Just like that. So it's flush out here to the edge. It'll be flush on the other side too. And once you have that flush like that, you can go ahead and take the 530 seconds and tighten these bolts up completely to secure the windscreen to the front load bar. At this point, I've got the rear foot structure mounted. I've got the front feet on, front load bar. I've got the windscreen in and secured. Now we're ready to attach the groove tech to the side of the truck. I'm gonna pull one of the pieces up here for the driver's side, show you guys what we're working with, talk about the tools and the hardware. Then we'll reposition the camera to get it mounted onto the vehicle so you guys can see. The groove tech are the full length pieces. So they're not notched uh, in two separate sections like all the rest of the pieces of the rack, but they run the full length they have the step to remove the top, and then they have the bolt holes at the very front. So this is the front of the Groove Tech, and then back here is the rear of the Groove Tech. And the Groove Tech pieces are the exact same for driver and passenger side. So you can use them on either side of the vehicle. You're still gonna use the hardware from the load bar bag, and you guys need to apply thread locker to all those bolts before you proceed. For the remaining load bar bolts, you're gonna apply the VC3. And you're going to do this a little different than the rest of the hardware. You're just going to put a vein all the way down one side of the bolt like that right there and let those dry just like the rest of it for about 10 minutes until it's no longer like sticky to the touch. Then they're ready to use. Okay, because I'm putting the side on by myself, I did put a little cover up here at the front of the vehicle just because I don't want the, the nose of it to come into contact with the roof. This vehicle's wrapped and it would be a real shame to scratch it right now. So I've just got a barrier up here to protect the front end because I'm first gonna attach it back here at the back. These four holes at the top will correspond to these four holes at the back of the groove tech above these machine slots. The machine slots are there to allow the existing bolt holes or bolts that you've got in your foot back here to flush mount into that cavity. So I'll set the camera up, I'll get this piece up on the vehicle, then I'll show you guys how to put the hardware in. We're gonna be using a 5 30 seconds Allen wrench for this. So let me set the camera up and get one side on and then we'll talk about the details. To start with, I've got, uh, I've got one of the sides of the groove tech here and I've got four bolts. So I'm gonna go up there and align everything, get those four bolts started. Then I'll grab the camera to show you guys the, the detail.
So at the back, I've got those four bolts in right here. So these holes down the sides, those are all still open. These upper ones are for a grab handle. The middle ones are for armor attachment later. And these bottom ones we'll talk about after we've got both sides of the roof rack on. They're for the lower brace. But right now I wanna concentrate on getting these four bolts in and tight. I'm flush to the top and it's got the roof rack supported right now with this front up here hanging loose like this. You don't wanna put these two front bolts in yet. There's another piece that goes in between. Once I've got the driver's side suspended up here like this, I'm ready to grab the VRS front piece for the drivers. And again, VRS stands for very rigid subframe. It's a piece of groove tech that's bent to make it more rigid that goes inside of this piece of groove tech that we've now got on the driver's side. And the reason that you leave this loose is it goes inside of here and bolts to the front load bar between the groove tech and the, the load bar that's got the windscreen attached to it. So the VRS for the driver's side front, if you set it up like this, see where it's got this bend and it's notched around the seam pod and then this rectangular hole is to provide clearance for a piece of hardware. But if I'm standing behind it, this would be the back. It's bent to the inside here and this is the front of the roof rack. So I'm gonna grab it and go up and attach it. We'll anchor here, then it'll come back here and it'll just sit. It is pretty handy to have one of the little quick clamps for this step. I just use these little Irwin guys right here to support the back of it. So let me set this up, put it in, then I'll show you guys the details. So I've got the piece that goes on the driver's side. And if I hold it up here, you guys are gonna notice all these slots will line up to these slots but the bend portion should face the inside of the vehicle. So if I just set this inside in place here, I should be able to line these guys up, these two front holes, now not the large one, but the two that are stacked on top of each other are for your load bar hardware. So those are gonna pass through and then we'll adjust and pull on the front feet to get that hardware to line up and then just start these. Don't wanna fully tighten anything yet. So I've got both of those started. Now if I can get my hands on the camera without falling off this stand and dying. I'm gonna, inside you can see where the bend follows along here and right now it's just kind of sitting all weird but these two bolts are started up here at the front. So what I wanna do now is use my clamp, right? Pick this inner piece up, line it up perfectly to the top leading edge of the groove tech and then just clamp it in place. So you see where the two pieces come together right here? and all of our slots, holes, everything is all lined up. Now I wanna make sure that that stays the same all the way across and then tighten up these two bolts. I like my alignment. You guys see this piece right here? I'll tell you about this here in a second, but it's got a lot to do with that factory piece that's on the hood of your truck. But let me go ahead and tighten these guys up. So I'm anchored at the front on the driver's side and I'm still just clamped together back here at the back. As we go to install the load bars across here, the bolts will pass through both pieces and at each location where there's a load bar, it'll clamp those two pieces together to shore up that frame. This is the driver's side. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the passenger side. So you guys saw the driver's side. This is the passenger side, same thing. The four bolts at the top. You can see the slots that let the hardware flush mount in there. 
those were the first four bolts that you put in when you attach the load bars to that. I've got the VRS clamped in and bolted up at the front, and if you look, it's bent under. So I know it's hard to see, but I'm looking down the rack, and the bend is to the inside. I don't put a ton of emphasis on this uh, as far as insulation because these pieces will literally only fit together one way. Um, it's impossible to put the driver's side on the passenger side and so on and so forth. They intentionally will not fit like that. So I'm secured up here at the front. That's all clamped in. You can see where the windscreen comes down flush. We don't have any gaps up in here. Let's talk about this little hook guy right here. Your hood has an attachment point and the top of your rack now has an attachment point. If you guys want to use this to anchor kayaks or to put those stringers that go across to push branches out of the way, uh, you're free to hook product and gear like that to these front cargo hooks at the front of the roof rack. They intentionally stick out like that and mimic the shape of this so that you guys have uh, a place to attach things. I'm at the front of the roof rack now. The next step is to get the rack centered on the vehicle. To do that, we're gonna need a tape measure and that 5 30 seconds Allen wrench that we've been using so much of. I just want to make a measurement from the inside of the roof rack here to the outside edge of the front foot and see what I have on the driver's side, which is two and three quarters inches. Then I'm going to make that same measurement over there on the passenger side and then adjust the rack left to right at the front. I'll show you guys now with everything bolted in, it just simply slides back and forth, right? So I want to measure the distance from here to the inside wall and make sure that it's the same on both sides. When you measure it, if it's not, you simply just adjust it from one side to the other until those numbers match. Once you have that, you're going to tighten up these three bolts in the top of the load bar on both sides with a 5 30 seconds Allen wrench. So believe it or not, it actually said exactly where it was supposed to be. Mine measured two and three quarters inch on both sides. Uh, as with a lot of load bar mounts that we do, um, please do this step with the tape measure yourself. There's no guarantee that our math is going to match your math. And if you get it on there, not only is it going to look funny, but a roof rack that's canted a little bit one way to the driver passenger side can have more wind noise than we intend for them to have. So just use the tape measure, do the math, center the front of the rack. The rear centers on its own. You don't ever have to worry about that. And once you're locked in, you may need to use a T-handle because you've got the windscreen in here to get enough access to actually clamp those bolts down. So I'm just using a 5 30 seconds T-handle. I'll tighten up all three bolts on the driver's side then go tighten up all three bolts on the passenger side. Now that we've got the three bolts tightened up on both sides, it's automatically pulled the foot back to where it's supposed to be. You see in there that it compressed that foam gasket a little bit. We expect that to happen. Now I just want to use a 10 millimeter ratchet, tighten down those factory bolts to secure the front of the roof rack. So I'm just using a shallow 10 mil so it'll fit underneath the lip of the windscreen. You could totally use a wrench for this, but once I've got this side tightened, now I wanna go tighten down the passenger side. I've got both sides of the front tightened up now. So the factory bolts are snug down here and over on the other side. At the end of the video, we'll come back and we'll talk about those factory caps and covers and, and whether or not you wanna use them is up to you. But I will show you guys how to modify them and attach them. Uh, in a way that they can be used to hide this front foot while the rack's installed, but they can always be put back to factory and put back in place when you go to get rid of the vehicle, or if you decide you don't need a roof rack anymore. Next, we want to install the lower tie braces. You'll have two of these in your hardware kit. The bag of hardware that you need should say lower braces or lower tie braces. Uh, you'll need a 3 16th inch Allen wrench and a half inch open end wrench, but you don't need any Loctite for this because we're using nylon lock nuts. I'm gonna show you guys where it goes and I'll put one in and then we'll talk about it. So see these lower holes on either side of the back foot here? This tie brace goes behind the rack, lines up with these holes, then you put those bolts in, the nylocks go on the back and you tighten them down. So that adds a support structure across the bottom to shore up the rear load bar at the back of the rack.
Also, I'm in the lower positions on either side. The tie brace is installed on the back and the nylocks are in. And once that's locked in, even with no load bar back here, I can't even move the back of the rack up and down. That is there so that it locks this assembly back together as one full piece. Because if you guys are getting up here, a lot of you will be going over the back of the roof rack. So we want the rear end to be as rigid as it can be. So go put the other lower tie brace on the passenger side. It's the same hardware, same orientation, you're good. So now we're ready to install the rear pieces of the VRS. It's the same rigid system that you put in the big front section, but only this time it's these two smaller rears. And these will install in conjunction with the rear load bar, which installs vertically. So right now you need the driver's side, which when you set them down on the table and they stand themselves upright like this, the fold again goes to the inside of the rack. So this is my driver's side and this is my passenger side. I need four of my load bar bolts, a two by one load bar, and a 532nd Allen wrench. Again, I'll be using some quick clamps for this because I need to align the rear VRS with the existing holes in the roof rack and then just clamp it into place to help hold it while I put the load bar in. So let me get this one stuck. This is on the driver's side. See how the bend is on the inside edge pointed towards the middle of the roof. And then I just have it lined up at the back so that you can pass the bolts through the holes. The rear load bar is gonna install right here vertically. So it's gonna install upright like this. That top threaded hole will be here and the bottom threaded hole will be here. So I'm gonna go grab the other side and put it on and then I'm ready to install this load bar. So with both sides clamped in place now, I'm just gonna position the load bar in. You can actually rest it on those little shelves. Line up the holes. Start that hardware by hand. And because there's no adjustability on this, once we have the hardware started, you can go ahead and fully tighten it in place. So it should look like this. This is your inner VRS right here. This is your roof tech. Load bar is vertical. And then there's your two bolts. We'll talk about this hole here in a little bit. I've got these two started. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten them up. Then I'll go do the same thing on the passenger side. So the rear load bar is in completely. At this point, if you guys are doing any additional wiring as far as the optional quick wire harnesses or you're gonna put some stuff in here yourself, I would suggest that you do it now because without the load bars and all that stuff in the way, it's easier to go in and hide the wiring. For you guys using the quick wire harnesses on the inside of your VRS where they're bent, if you follow them all the way down, those little machined holes that are in there are for snapping those trees that ship with our quick wires in place to secure those harnesses inside the rack and keep them protected. At the back of the rack, you're gonna find a machine slot between your rear load bar that is the pass-through point for wiring so that you can route it underneath the roof rack and then through the load bar from the driver's side to the passenger side to keep it hidden. So now I'm ready to install the remaining load bars. If you follow along here, these horizontal slots, see those first three? So here's your rear foot, and I'm on the driver's side, okay? But here's your rear foot, and then there's one, two, three. Those three spots get two by one load bars. You can install them anywhere within the slot. You can always adjust them later to help line up on different pieces of gear. It's just important that wherever you have it in the slot on the driver's side, it's in the same location on the passenger side so that it's not in all crooked. It would cause the roof rack to bow and cause alignment issues with your armor. Forward of that, there are two vertical, two horizontal slots stacked on top of each other. These two positions are for that remaining two by two load bar. You can use either one that you feel like using. The one that you don't use will get an additional two by one load bar in it, but we've done that up here at the front of the rack because the two by two load bars are better suited for supporting large, heavy rooftop tents. And so given the length of your tent, 
position that two by two load bar in there so that it's there to support that tent. And that's one of the load bars that you want to anchor your rooftop tent to. And then finally, you've got the front one, which is what you'll attach your light bar to if you're doing so. I'll put that one in last. Right now, I'm gonna go ahead and load the load bars across these three two by ones. I'm gonna go ahead and put a two by two at the front section, which means I'll put a two by one here. When you put in the two by one, just stay at the upper slot, not the lower. All of the load bars are in now. So just to recap, just to help you guys out. It's a two by one vertically in the rear. The rear foot is two, two by two load bars. Then I've got two by one, two by one, two by one, and two by one. <clears throat> At the front double location is where I put the other two by two load bar. Then I've got the front load bar as a two by one. In the other vertical location where you could put a two by two load bar with, with one two by one, it's at the top of the slot and the bottom slot remains open. With all the load bars in, now we're ready to attach the armor panels. Grab the bag of hardware that says Armor to Groove Tech. Each attachment location is gonna be the exact same. So you're gonna have your bolt, your spacer in between the armor and the outer groove tech. Then you'll have your nylock on the inside. Then you tighten those up. This hardware also requires a 3 16 inch Allen with a half inch open end wrench. There's also no driver or passenger side indicator for the armor panel. The one I'm holding right now is a front and it can be used on either the driver or passenger side. You'll notice that we did knock out the scene pod already. Our guy Dave is gonna come back once this installation is finished and he's gonna complete some wiring, including our rock lights on the side here. So we went ahead and chewed these out. If you guys are putting scene pods in it, I would suggest that you cut this out before you put it on the roof rack. The holes that you see going across it those are the anchor points that we're gonna to use to attach it to the groove tech. So I'll set everything up and get this one in place, and then we'll come back and I'll show you guys the details on how it actually anchors. So I set my hardware up on top of the vehicle already to make this a little easier for me. I'll start, uh, let me just start at the rear. Take the bolt, push it through the hole, then apply the spacer over the threads of the bolt so you should have exposed threads right here. Line them up to the leftover hole in the armor It'll hold itself in place long enough for you to do the same thing towards the front of the roof rack. So that you can get the nylock started. Once you have them started, it'll hold itself in place and then you can just tighten everything up. So I got all the hardware started on the front section. Now there's still a section that goes back here, but follow your bolts along. There are spacers in between them. So in between the armor and groove tech, there are some spacers. And then up on the inside are your nylon lock nuts. So just use a five, or sorry, a three sixteenths inch Allen and a half inch wrench and go ahead and tighten all those up. Then go put the front, uh, front armor on the passenger side as well. So you see with the front armor installed that it, this tail here is designed to hide that connection point for that hardware. And you follow it all the way forward, you have your scene pod, then it comes across and it anchors here at the front and hides the two bolts for the windscreen. Next is gonna be this rear panel here. And just like this one, there's two in your kit and there is no driver or passenger. But again, if you're installing scene pods, you probably want to cut that knockout out before you install that panel. I've got the rear installed. 
So you can see the seam between the two that we've got engineered here. There are two remaining holes open here and two remaining holes open here between these two load bars. Those leftover holes are where you're gonna anchor your grab handles. So at this point, make sure that you got the armor on both sides of the vehicle. Once you've got them all tightened up, go check out our video that tells you how to tie our grab handles, get that part completed, then come back and we'll be ready to put the handles on. So now you should have your grab handles tied up. Go ahead and push the hardware in the bag labeled grab handle through the lace plate so it looks like this right here. Slide a spacer over the studs of each bolt. Go ahead and push them through the groove tech at the top in that location like that right there. And then reach around the back side and install the nylock. Then use a 3 16 inch Allen and a, and a half inch wrench, there you go, a half inch wrench to tighten those up. And just to recap, you'll have a handle here, here at the front, and then over on the other side is a mirror image. So you'll have one above this rear foot and you'll take the last one up here at the front in those two big open holes. Okay, for those of you that wanna know how to modify that front factory plastic cap, if you're interested in putting that back on as kind of a cosmetic cover, then go to the end of this video. That's where I'm gonna stash that when they edit everything out. If you're installing lighting into the windscreen of your Bronco roof rack, then continue watching because that's what we're gonna show you next. If you've got a no-cut windscreen and you're not installing any lighting, you are effectively done with the installation of this thing unless you're gonna install those caps. So if you want the caps, go to the end of the video, watch that. If you don't, then just go to the torque specification PDF attached to this video, go through the roof rack, tighten everything up to the specs net guide, then just like everything else on your vehicle, periodically check the hardware, inspect the rack for wear, tear, damage, and if you guys ever need any replacement parts, feel free to reach out to support at uptopoverland.com. Uh, other than that, for the lighting guys, keep watching. For the cap mod people, go to the end of the video. If you're not doing either of those things, your roof rack is on, load it up with gear, get out there. For those of you that are installing light bars into the windscreen that came with your Bronco rack, it would have shipped with a kit. It's got two identical brackets in it, so there is no left, right. Basically, the way I'm holding them in my hand to where these tabs face one direction, that's how they're gonna to install to the roof rack. It just simplifies production and keep things a little easier on our end. Plus, it's easier to explain to you guys. The light bar that we're installing today is an extreme 38 inch light bar. Um, it does require a spacer to push one foot out away from this knuckle here where all the wiring is at. If you're installing like a Baja Designs uh, S840 or Onyx 6, you won't have to use a spacer. Um, we include the hardware to direct bolt that light bar, both those light bars into these brackets as well. Um, you'll only have to use this spacer in applications where you're trying to get around this knuckle. As with most of our roof racks, we intend for you guys to use either our house brand roof rack, or I'm sorry, house brand light bar, this 38 inch extreme light bar or a Baja Designs light bar. There are hundreds of other choices out there and unfortunately I don't have experience with every one of them. So you may have to manipulate or make your own brackets or source additional hardware to pull this off. But our brackets are gonna cover the, the three main light bars that we interface with all the time. So I'm gonna start by attaching the bracket to the side of the light bar and in that hardware kit you've got a long 50 millimeter bolt with a washer and lock washer and you have a spacer and that is designed to go on this end where the plug is so if you look at this this front section if you guys own Baja Designs light bars that's going to look super familiar to you for all the M8 hardware you're going to use this horizontal slot here so I'm just going to slide that hardware through Put the spacer over that, tuck that wiring harness back, and start those threads in there by hand. And once I have them started, I'll just tighten that up with a five mil.
you know, seeing that application, we're bending that wire, but we've got plenty of clearance on this side, so it's not going to put this in a bind and damage the connection in here. On the opposite end, where you do not have that spacer, you'll find in your kit a shorter bolt with the same lock washer and flat washer. And again, just use that horizontal slot there. Lock washer, flat washer through the slot. Line it up to the end of your light bar. Get it started. And then tighten it up. You want to leave it just loose enough that you can still wiggle this to aim the light bar at the front of the vehicle. And once you have it mounted to the truck, you can tighten everything up and um, set that hardware for good. Once we're in like this, the remaining hardware that ships are these drop-in T-nuts with 16 millimeter bolts, lock washers, and flat washers. These T-nuts, and I'll, I'll set the camera up and show you guys how we do it, these T-nuts don't require you to take apart the rack. You can literally roll them into the channels on the top of your extrusion to anchor these brackets. For the brackets that we include, each side will get two sets of hardware with the T-nut. So I've got this started. Let me get the camera up on top of the vehicle and then I'll drop the hardware in. We'll mount this. I'll show you guys how we center it. And then um, if it's a light bar that you don't have or you have questions that, that I'm not covering here, again, feel free to reach out to support. We've got a ton of experience. We just haven't mounted every light bar on earth. So I've got my light bar brackets mounted to the light. I'm going to take the drop-in T-nut and I'm using the top slots here. <clears throat> You can use any of them for any light bar that you have, but for our application, this is what we're using. And they just kind of roll in and then go do the same thing on the other side. And right now it doesn't matter where you have them because once you have the hardware started, <clears throat> excuse me, you can slide the light bar left to right to line it up inside of the windscreen. Additionally, you have this adjustment here to move the light bar forward and backward you also have the ability to scoot the front load bar forward and backwards to really dial in the placement of the light bar in the notch in your cut windscreen. So <clears throat> I've got my T-nuts in place. I'm just going to set the, the load bar or the light bar rather up on the roof rack and then line up that hardware to those T-nuts. Start those by hand. I don't want to fully tighten them. I just want them snug enough that it'll support the light bar for me. I still want to be able to move this left to right so that I can visually center this thing up in the front of the truck. So now I'm just going to go do the same thing on the passenger side. From here, and I'll show you guys the brackets, so that's it at the top, lift over, and then it drops down like this so I can adjust here, I can adjust here, and if I loosen this, I can twist the load bar to aim it at the front of the vehicle. I've got it centered, and to do that, I just, I didn't use a tape measure. I went to the front of the vehicle, and I slid it back and forth until it lined up with the, uh, <clears throat> the very visible dot for the rear view mirror. That's in the middle of the windshield, so it was, it was easy to use as an indicator. So now I'll just tighten these up. And I will want to go over and tighten up the hardware on the other side, and then finally, once our guy's done with the wiring and we can power it up, we'll direct the angle of the beam at the front of the vehicle to keep it off the hood. Then we'll tighten up those five mils and we're done. This part of the video covers how to complete the modification for cap retention at the front of your roof rack where we'll actually modify the factory plastic caps that cover the accessory ready points at the front of the windshield of the truck. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. I've got one side done and you can see the cap is back on. Now it's sitting high because it's sitting on the foot but from the front of the vehicle it still looks very finished and we're good and it is very secure like it was uh, from the factory. And if I go around to the back of the foot, that little machine slot that's in there, you can still use a screwdriver to push in the, uh, the cap, the, the release button, and remove that cap. So let me set the camera down. I'll show you guys, I'll pull that cap out of there. So I've got my hand underneath the windscreen here. I just push in on that button and release that cap. You can see it here. 
and there's the factory piece mounted with two new screws and it's actually secured to the foot of your roof rack. It sets down over the two factory locations that we use to show you where they go. And then anytime you want to put the cap back on, just get it up in there, snake it in place and snap it back on like that right there. And it would look like this at the front instead of this with that exposed foot and factory hardware. So I've shown you what it looks like. If you decide you want to do it yourself, keep watching the video because now I'm going to show you how I did that. Locate that bag in your hardware kit that says cap retention inside of it. And mind you, I already have the passenger side on. That's how I tested all this. So all I have left is the hardware for the driver's side, which is two screws and two spacers here. This is the factory cap. That is that push button that you already have off. So this shows you the inside of the cap and then the over cap. And this customer's had his vehicle wrapped. That's why this looks the way that it does. Yours is probably just black or painted to match the exterior of the vehicle. So in that retention kit, you're gonna have a tap for the screws themselves and then a drill bit uh, that'll serve as the pilot through the black plastic cap, as well as the two holes that you'll make in the front of your mount foot at the front of your vehicle. And again, just to stress, you're not drilling any holes in the vehicle and you're not making any permanent modifications to this thing that would prevent you from putting this back on if you remove the, the roof rack later in life. The two screws are going to go in this general area here. They fit underneath the cap. The roof rack still allows access to this push button so that you can release the cap. And if you wanted to remove the roof rack and put it back on, you would simply just take this off, remove the roof rack, put this back in place with the factory two 10 millimeter bolts and put the cap back on and life would be swell again. So there's a couple of measurements that you have to make. And just again, I'm using the driver's side piece because I already have the passenger side on the vehicle. So when I'm holding it here, the driver's side has a slant to it like this. This would be over by the driver's door. This would be facing the passenger side of the vehicle right here. The passenger side of that is just a mirror image, but the process here is the exact same. So I've got a fancy digital caliper that I paid about eight bucks for on Amazon. You guys can also just use a ruler if you want to do this step. But uh, to start with, let me tap that so I can see what I'm doing. I set it to about 250, so a quarter inch. And I want to make a mark. Let me set it on the ground here. So I've got my marker. I want to measure straight up from this little post. If you see that little post right there, there's two of them. The one on the edge close to the identification marker paper. I want to measure up a quarter of an inch. And then I want to measure over a quarter of an inch from that mark. And this becomes my first spot right here. So I'm just going to draw a little X right there. Then I'm going to reset my caliper to three quarters of an inch, which is 750. Um, these fancy Chinese ones um, will even give you fractions, which is just an engineering nightmare. Um, so from the center of that X, come directly over. Don't, don't follow it like this. Go directly over, straight parallel, and just make your second mark. And then draw your X. These become the two holes that we're going to drill in the little plastic piece. So now you can see how far away they are from the factory holes. They're not going to do any permanent damage and it's a lightweight plastic so it drills really easy. I've just got a regular cordless drill. I'm going to chuck up my 5 30 seconds drill bit. I'll line up on the X and punch that hole. And then the same thing on the other. So now you can see the two new holes in here and that's where these guys will eventually go. We don't drill these out enough that these screws can just fall through because the idea here is to make it easy to put on and easy to remove. I want this thing to just basically hold these screws into this unit to make uh, when you take it off the truck for whatever reason, the screws are buried in there and you don't worry about dropping them and they disappear behind your wiper cowl or anything crazy like that. So now we're ready to take this plastic piece over to the vehicle 
use the two factory slots to locate the piece, mark these two holes in the aluminum foot of your new roof rack, and make these two holes for the screws. So let me reset the camera and I'll grab the, this piece and the drill and we'll go do that. So back up at the vehicle, I got my factory part here. These are the two factory holes. I'm just gonna set them over the exposed studs there. That'll locate this in the right spot. I can even let it go, it just holds itself in place. Then I'm gonna hold it in place by hand and mark it with the cordless drill and the drill bit. So just go through that hole and make sure that it contacts that factory, that, uh, that roof rack foot in two spots here and I'll move them. And you see those two shiny silver holes right there? Those are the markers. Now I can drill that hole for each uh, screw location. Before I do that, I'm gonna take some masking tape and I'm gonna attach it to the front of the foot there and just snake it over the vehicle so that these aluminum shavings just trickle right off and run down the windshield so they don't get up in this crack here. So the foot for your roof rack is aluminum. It's pretty soft. It'll drill really easy. You'll see this. There's not really any pressure being put on this at all. So there's the first one. And there's the second one. If I blow on it, knock all that out of the way, and then just remove that masking tape. Now grab that tin, that, that uh, thread tap that comes in your kit. We're gonna chuck it up in the cordless drill and tap these holes. I just got the tap in the chuck of the drill and I'm just gonna slowly let it go cut the threads in both locations. So now both these holes are threaded. Let me get the spacers and the screws and we'll attach this uh, black piece here to this guy. I wanna preload the, the included screws into those two holes there. And like I said, that hole is the exact same size as those threads right now. So if you push on it, it'll start to cut itself in there and it should go into the hole. make a liar out of me here. There we go, that one's started. Now that one should be started. Okay, so at this point, just go ahead and set those screws all the way in. They'll tighten up and kind of bottom out and feel stuck. Give them one or two additional turns just so it pulls the threads out of this plastic so that this will turn easily with the wrench. Then we'll be ready to attach it to the vehicle. So I've got my factory piece, the two screws are started in them. I can't move them by hand, but they rotate pretty easy now with the Allen wrench. So it goes in this direction with the push tab towards the inside of the rack. I want to take and put a spacer over each screw like that and then hold them in place. Line up this piece over the factory bolt holes and line up my screws to the holes that we just drilled. So I've got the spacers underneath uh, the screws here. I'm just gonna hold them in hand. Uh, drop this thing kind of into place here over those factory screws and then use the Allen wrench as a guide to move it down into the screw holes. There it goes. So that one's going in. Now I'll start the other one. Look up underneath there. And once you have them both started like that, just tighten them up until it compresses the spacers against the feet. Then you'll be ready to put the cap on. So we've got the bolts are all in. You can see where they compress down on the spacers. Those are tight. They're lined up over the two factory exposed studs. Now just take the cap, put it under and put it over the, uh, the little clip part so it'll compress that. And 
one way or the other here. There it goes. There. And it just snaps right on. And it has a finished look across the front of the vehicle.